So anyway, here's another one for you. This is uh, Mitch uh, Trattenbaum. This is over in, uh, I want to go Humboldt County, so it's California. Diebold admits audit logs of all versions of their software fail to record ballot deletions. So you trusted your elections, even though there was voter fraud before. When it was Bush and stuff, you know, you heard some of the Democrats get up, because remember that? When Bush was in, I was the leftist guy, right? Because I said, hey, there's voter fraud. You know, 17,000 negative votes. How do you do that? You know, yet those companies are still allowed. Even we here in Sharon do paper ballots. We stick in electronic machines. So Diebold gets caught, okay? Even the audit system on current versions of premier election solutions, notice they changed the name, premier election systems used to be called Diebold, okay? So anyway, the electronic voting and tabulating systems used in 34 states, because you can trust the vote, okay, across the nation, fail to record the wholesale deletion of ballots, even when ballots are deleted on the same day as the election. Well, and this is uh, from the Humboldt County Election Transparency Project, using the free and open source software, okay, called Ballot Browser, found Diebold's gem system had eliminated all the votes from 197 vote-by-mail ballots. Hey, do you remember when our soldiers didn't have their ballots counted, when, when Bush was running for office and stuff? And, and the guy who asked, the Democrat guy, because we think there's a difference, Republican, Democrat, when they asked the Democrat guy, hey, how come you didn't fight the results? They... Gave him what? The taser? Don't tase me, bro. And you, you Americans, you thought it was funny. At that point, you said, don't tase me, bro, is funny. When he was asking the questions of, hey, you know there's voter fraud, there's proven voter fraud, but you're not fighting the, uh, how come? Zzz, don't tase me, bro. Yeah. So anyway, I got another one for you. There's some more news. This is, um, it's interesting, never vaccinated children have no autism. Hey, big farmers, you know, poisoning kids. Is that new? Let's see. They used to put people in ovens. They used to give them poison. We found out they put AIDS in vaccines. That's Bayer, right? Bayer Pharmaceuticals. We found out Baxter Pharmaceuticals, if you watched the previous show, that they put live avian flu virus, that's H5N1, into the batches that they sent out to make vaccines from. And they killed people in Poland, okay, with test vaccines. But no autism in never vaccinated children. Here we go, this comes out of Chicago. All right, Home First Medical Services treats thousands of never vaccinated children whose parents received exemptions from Illinois' relatively permissive immunization policy. That's, there's no law, by the way, that you have to vaccinate your children. These are policies and stuff. But anyway, it's turning Home First Medical Director, a Meyer Eisenstein, Dr. Meyer Eisenstein, okay, told us Okay, he is not aware of any cases of autism in never vaccinated children. The national rate of 1 in 175, check your share in school system if you think that's wrong. Okay, according to the Centers on Disease Control and Prevention, remember them? Okay, okay, we have a fairly large practice. Eisenstein told us we have about 30 to 35,000 children that we have taken care of over the years, and I don't know that we have a single case of autism in children delivered by us who never received vaccines. We do have enough of a sample, Eisenstein said. The numbers are too large not to see it. But you're told that you need your vaccines, that you need your vaccinations. And I, not I told you, excuse me, how about, gosh, Canadian press, okay? How about the Times of India told you that Baxter Pharmaceuticals is a city of bear. Just put live avian flu in the vaccine batches they sent out to be made. But that didn't bother you, did it? Because you're a Sharonite. You're a World Wide Web viewer. You don't care if they put live avian flu in your vaccines. Get ready for the next pandemic. That's right. Things like that happen, huh? All right, here we go. Mullen sketches out U.S. strike on Iran. The top U.S. military commander describes how Washington would engage Iran militarily amid simmering talks of war on the country. Hey, didn't they condition us to get used to the Iraq war before it happened? Now they're getting us conditioned to what we need to attack another country. Obama's moving tons of troops into what, Afghanistan now? Okay. In the weekend interview with Charlie Rose, that's in case you want to know what the, um, the New World Order's agenda is, you watch Charlie Rose, okay? Admiral Mike Mullen, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said although he is concerned with the consequences of a military action against Iran, the Army could rely on its very strong strategic reserve. What's important about this is they're conditioning you to get used to the thought of war with Iran. Yes, you need to get used to that. So I hope you get used to it, you know? What the heck? We just, you know, invaded and attacked a country that didn't attack us, right? That was Iraq, based on lies, which you know all about, 
but that's okay with you because you better shut up and take your vaccine. Don't give a hassle in the airport. Oh, I want to go for the... All right, it's airport time. This is where we go into 9-11 stuff. Once a week, I try to give you a little bit of 9-11 stuff, so you'll ask questions. Here's my one for you. You know, the passenger list on all four flights, published by the airlines, and you can get a list of those passengers, okay? And CNN, remember those? Cable Network News, Wolf Blitzer, and all that good stuff? On September 11th, contain none of the hijackers' names. So there's your little 9-11 thought. How is it that all four of the airplanes on 9-11 that supposedly had the hijackers on them didn't have flight manifests with the names of the hijackers? Yet we were told, and you were told, that they found a passport in the rubble in New York City. A passport in the rubble in New York City. And the pictures they showed you were out of Portland Airport of supposedly Muhammad Atta. And you were told that the phone call said there were hijackers with box cutters, and that was Barbara Olson. Yeah, remember Ted Olson? Okay, yeah, that guy worked in the Department of Justice. And then we found out by the Federal Bureau of Investigation that when they showed all the phone calls made from the flights, that the cell phone of Barbara Olson never connected. It had an attempted call, not connected, zero seconds. But it was Barbara Olson who said, they've got knives and box cutters. So yeah, this New World Order thing can't be real. You still have to take your shoes off, and you might be the next Al-Qaeda. Don't forget that when you go to the airport. All right, it gets better, because now we need more vehicles to spy on Americans. What we're going to do is we're going to tell you that the Pentagon plans blimp to spy from new heights. Yep, they're going to spend about $400 million to develop these blimps that are about 450 feet long. And if you don't believe me, check out the article from the LA Times. So you got to ask yourself, how soon will it be until these blimps are overhead with you. And as you walk through the airport and they get you the 360 scan of your naked body, because they need to see a, a picture of your naked mother and your naked wife and your naked daughter and your naked baby. Okay, so they can look at your genitalia evidently and store the image and then maybe they can use, like they have facial recognition software, we'll have body and then gate software. We can keep an eye on you all the time because tracking you on the highway is not enough. Notice the cameras. Tracking you in Somerville with the cameras. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know, we're putting cameras up. Why is it always federal money granted for that, you know? And, okay. Here's what we're going to get. We're going to go through this fast. Last week, we told you a little bit about this, this HR 875. Oh, listen, you backyard farmers. My pumpkin guy. Listen, Mr. Uh, I've got Ward's Berry Farm down the street, Mr. Ward, okay? This, it seems that Congressman Rosa DeLeo, De okay, the sponsor of HR 875, the so-called Food Safety Modernization Act, check this out, you sleepers and Sharon, okay, has her husband employed by Monsanto, the company that would directly benefit from the provisions of her bill that threatened to destroy organic farms in America, the little farmer guys. Yeah, Tyson, the big chicken people, you know, um, Archer Daniel Midlands, Monsanto, they're all pushing for this because this isn't corporatism, this isn't fascism, this is the new Americanism. While you slept, but it gets interesting because Big Brother legislation could mean prosecution and fines up to a million dollars. I'll give it to you. Once again, House Resolution 875, look it up, I could be lying, okay, or the Food Safety Modernization Act of 2009, if you want to go by the title, okay, was introduced by Rosa DeLoraro, Democrat from Connecticut. Man, do all the losers like Lieberman have to come from Connecticut? Okay, in February, Delora's husband, Stanley Greenberg, works for Monsanto, the world's leading producer of herbicides and genetically engineered seed. That's important. You should remember that. So anyway, fines up to a million dollars per offense, criminal regulate, you know, Let's see, legislation would establish the Food Safety Administration because the government needs another administration. We can, what, spend money and steal from you and tax you, okay? We're going to have federal regulators showing up in your backyard, okay? It's interesting because what I find interesting anyway, you know, it boils down to, you know, who can afford to have the most influence in government? And evidently, you know, Tyson, Monsanto, Archer, Daniel Midlands are the ones. So the little farmers, okay, are going to have to keep all this information and make stuff available and do this and that. And even people who transport food. Is this the way that Stalin and stuff did it by controlling the motion, the movement of food? Ah, oh, it gets better because, you know, they're going to sit there and they're going to turn around and tell you, well, what kind of herbicides you can use, what kind of pesticides, which is all sounds fair and good. But what about that little organic farmer who uses manure? Is that going to be approved? Does he have to keep records? Um, what cow's anus did the cow manure come out of? You know, this is important because it's the federal government getting in to everything you do. Any person that, this is directly from it, this is a quote, any person that commits an act that violates the food safety law, 
may be assessed a civil penalty by the administrator of not more than a million dollars for each act. And if it's two days, it's a separate act. And oh, yeah, criminal sanctions may be imposed.